Good afternoon, Bill. Welcome to Campus Party in Asia. So for the purpose of the camera, why don't you uh, just give us a little bit of uh, introduction about yourself and uh, why you're here, what, what are you doing here today at Campus Party? For sure. So I'm Bill Reith and I live in California, San Francisco. So I came up out here with Backyard Brains and also with Skydio. So with Backyard Brains, we do neuroscience education. And I'm out here demonstrating our workshops to do different electrophysiology experiments that we can learn about neuroscience, but also have a lot of fun too and inspire people to hopefully uh, get into that research themselves too. And like I said, I'm also with a company called Skydio, which we have an autonomous drone, which we'll be talking about later. Uh, I've attended a, a fantastic presentation by you just now, which was absolutely full. This is the room. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you shared with the audience just now? Yeah, so the basically talk was a, kind of a cover of different types of uh, neuroscience and kind of why it's important to study that. So the main thing is that there's one in five people in the world will end up with a neurological disorder. And that's a very large number, 20%. And we really don't have any cures, we have treatments. So my talk was kind of a, a goal to inspire people to get into neuroscience and learn about it, but also to show the different tools that Backyard Brains makes to be able to study that. So I showed our RoboRoach experiment and also our human-to-human -human experiment where somebody's EMGs could control another person, person's arm with our Arduino and a specific uh, spiker box that we've made to work with that Arduino. So tell us a little bit more about that uh, Roach experiment that you did. How did the audience take it? Uh, yeah, so the, the audience is really impressed with that. We were able to actually make a cockroach leg move to music by stimulating it with the, the electri electrical signal of the music. So even though the leg was removed, it can actually still move. And it's a really cool demonstration because we can also talk about the, that micro simulation techniques used in medical research for treatments like Parkinson's, uh, deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's disease and also uh, cochlear implants. So I showed a video of a young girl that was 29 years old and she was deaf her whole life and she was able to get uh, hearing back after having a cochlear implant. So it's a very similar, similar micro simulation electrophysiology experiment that they do there to, to give this person her hearing back and we were able to demonstrate that with the, the cockroach. So uh, obviously uh, what you did was, uh, and what you explained on, on, on that example is something very new to Asia. So has it been something that is already considered the norm uh, where you come from, California? Oh no, definitely not. I think that whenever I pull cockroaches out pretty much anywhere, people are disgusted. I think everyone thinks of them as pests. But Backyard Brains is kind of changing people's mind on that. Uh, we do a lot of research where we can do this with crickets, earthworms. We don't just use cockroaches. But they're our favorite because we've found that they can regrow their legs. So we can remove a leg, do an experiment with it, and then the cockroach can actually regrow that. Uh, but definitely not the norm anywhere. I think Becker Brains is kind of paving a way with uh, uh, electrophysiology in a box. Uh, we're the first to do that, and it's really exciting to share. And we've seen a lot of young students use these in science fairs, and hopefully it will make it the norm eventually when we have a lot more people into neuroscience and understanding that all animals have an uh, electrical nervous system, and we can study that and learn about it and hopefully find some cures for the neurological disorders like Parkinson's and epilepsy and Alzheimer's. Right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Skydio. What's your involvement there? Yeah, so I'm a prototyping lab engineer at Skydio. So I help kind of build the future and also help build the development of our current products and our next up upcoming products. So right now Skydio is recently launched back in February of 2018. The R1, that's right, you've heard of it. So this is the world's first fully autonomous drone. It has 13 cameras on board. So one is a 4K camera, which is a subject camera. This is gonna film you and you get that footage right to your phone and you can save that and pull it off like a hard drive later so you can have this footage. And then it also has 12 cameras on board for obstacle avoidance. So this is two cameras in every direction, up, down, left, right, forward, back, that work kind of like our eyes. So we can measure distances and uh, actually map the world around it. So we can do SLAM, the simu simultaneous localization and mapping, and also optical flow. So essentially what that means, these big words are that it can do obstacle avoidance. And then with the camera on front, it does uh, computer vision. So we actually have a Tegra NVIDIA, NVIDIA Tegra GPU on board. It's a 256 core computer, so we can do deep learning on a drone. This is the first drone to have that. It's the same uh, GPU that is actually in the Tesla cars for the self-driving uh, in, in the lanes. So using that, we can do deep learning. It actually can learn what you look like as it's flying after you. And you can run through the woods, you can go skiing, and you can do that hands-free. So we've taken away the, the need for someone to learn how to pilot. And you can still use a manual mode if you'd like to pilot. But for a lot of people, it's a hard thing to do. And they start flying a drone, they crash it right away. 
and there's no reset button. It's not a video game. You're out money if you crash your drone. So we've made a drone that has really good obstacle avoidance so that it will not crash. Even if you try to fly into a wall, it will stop itself and avoid that. And then the autonomy level is next, like beyond any other drone out there, where you can put your phone away and enjoy the activity that you really like hands-free and get awesome footage. Right. So autonomous hands-free flying. That's uh, Skydio already paving the way for the future. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of other drones out there, but Skydio is working on this level of autonomy that is a future uh, forward uh, technology. And I think other, other companies might try this, but so far we've got the best product out there, and, and what we're doing for the future is going to be uh, amazing next steps for drones in general and uh, autonomy in robotics. Let's talk now a little bit about Campus Party. Now obviously, this is not the first Campus Party you've attending, first in Asia, obviously. But uh, could you share with us your experiences on other Campus Parties around the world that you've, 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 you've uh, attended? Yeah, so we were recently, Back Your Brains were, was invited to go to Brazil for Campus Party in, in Sao Paulo. So we had a great time there. We had a huge turnout, and I had so much fun. And, and the reason I really love these Campus Party events is because it's a huge mixture of uh, technology, and education and fun. So I can fly a drone, I can learn about neuroscience, I can uh, do cosplay and I can go learn about anthropology. Uh, I can go into the space dome and see amazing uh, projections. I heard Andrew Jones was here, which I'm stoked about. Um, and it's just so much fun, but wrapped up with all this education and learning opportunities and networking. So I can meet people of all different types of uh, walks of life and from different places in the world and different types of education. And we can share and learn and it's just a great, it cultivates a great community of people that are pushing forward a very positive environment here at uh, Campus Party. I love it. Right, great. So a little bit unfair to ask you this question at this stage, it's your second day here. But uh, what do you think the Asian um, community can bring to the campus party uh, table globally? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the Asian community has a, a, a leg up on technology, like places like Shenzhen. It's the epicenter of hardware where a lot of things are produced. And I think that, you know, out here, there's a really good energy. People are, are very nice. I love Singapore so far. I've only been here a day. Um, but I think the fact that it's coming here for the first time is just the birth of what will hopefully be as uh, prosperous as it has been in other places in the world where a lot more people can get into it and i mean just coming to a new place and opening that up to a whole new world i think that the, the asian culture is, has so much that we haven't had at campus party yet because this is the first one so to mix all that together it's gonna be an awesome thing and i hope we get invited back year after year all right we'll see you back here next year Bill. Cool. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you thank you so much